Welcome back here, 2016 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. I'm Maddie Marshall alongside Todd Martinez right now. We got three more games coming at you today. Clemson Tigers are going to be taking on the Central Florida Knights. And this is the Clemson Tigers' first year in Class A. And uh, the Central Florida Knights, been here before, been here for a while. Lost some of their dominant players, and they still have some good guys on that squad trying to do a little bit of a rebuild right now. So we'll see how they contend here up against Clemson, who are looking to make a name for themselves here in Class A. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a rough morning for all these teams coming into Class A to begin with. You know, just like we just watched Miami uh, struggle a little bit there against Purdue. You know, there's definitely a learning curve, um, but... You know, the teams that have the experience uh, have definitely shown, you know, why that they belong here. But the only way to, to be able to understand the game is to get in the game and play it. So uh, it's nice to see teams like Clemson, Miami, uh, Navy uh, really step up here. And uh, it's the only way you're going to understand the timing of this level, for sure. So on the breakout here, Clemson on your left and Central Florida Knights on your right. Looks like a pretty good break for the Knights. Unfortunately for Clemson, they do lose their attacker over here at Stakeside. They also lose a body out of D1. Just three players left alive for Clemson, and they are stuck in the pocket right now. And here come the Knights spreading the field out. I think that's Daughtry, who we've seen here do really well and get some good, solid spins in for his squad. Yeah, that is Daughtry all the way to the snake and on your screen. So it looks like Daughtry and the rest of the crew from Central Florida are going to be taking this first point here. I think it's just a matter of time, Todd. Yeah, bodies running off all over the field for Clemson. Lose them early. And Central Florida really just capitalizing on those moves. Yeah, nice move by Lamontane to get up there in the center. There's two Lamontane brothers, both David and Garrett. That was Garrett, number 10, up in the center. So I think that was a, was that a perfect point for them? I see Daughtry stoked. And I, I got a chance to actually to talk to Daughtry during the break. And that's such a nice guy, man. He's, he's definitely pumped up for, this is his last year here too, so. Yeah. Wow, his last spin with uh, with his crew, so he wants to make the most of it. Yeah, I believe uh, he was a sophomore when we saw him the first time. Came in and really dominated uh, for UCF, helped them win a championship. That's Brandon Evans on your screen right there. Known that kid for a long time as well. But, you know, uh, Daughtry came in that year, you know, really balled out for them in the snake. Uh, you know, now that he's a senior, really going to have to step up. Yeah, especially with that team losing, as we can see the replay here, the Clemson players had a chance to talk to them as well. They're incredibly excited to be here, but they had a really rough game, their first game against uh, Texas A&M, who I think is the favorite here at this event with the squad that they have. So yeah, a lot of people. 54 seconds ago, just getting going here. A lot of people talking about Texas A&M. You know, yeah. Because they got a couple former pro players. Sam McCarty yeah. from VCK. Got a couple other guys from the, uh, the AC Dallas squad. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly before we get to this next point. Thanks. Like you said, Maddie, they did have a tough match against Texas A&M, losing 11-1. to But they are coming off uh, uh, heading into this Nationals match with a second-place win. So they feel like they're playing well. They're just learning things as they go along each match, and they're hoping to be a bit more productive in this one. Back to you. So hoping to get these games in these last three games before the weather starts to set in. And it looked like the storm that was going to hit us this afternoon, according to the forecast, was going to push through. But the winds are starting to gust and we're seeing some dark clouds there, as you can see on your screen on the horizon. So we'll just have to hold tight here and see what happens. It's Florida. You never know. Yeah. The storm could come in, just rain on us for 10 minutes and then be gone sunshine the rest <laughs> of the day. But, you know, I, I hate playing in the mud and the rain. But I would rather play in the overcast and the cold than play with the wide open sky and the sun just bearing down on us. It's super humid here in Florida. So, yeah, so it did again when, I, when we woke up this morning, I checked the forecast and it looked like we were going to get hit later on this afternoon. But I think it's going to blow through, according to the experts. We'll see. Now, into this next point here as the Knights go straight up into the center. And I think that's Dempsey. Yeah, so Dempsey up into the center here for the Knights, and it looks like Daughtry's going to get shot out of his spot there in Snake 1. He does have a player right beside him. Knights, or uh, Clemson, also losing a body as well, too. Looks like Clemson, the Tigers, are going to lose another body on that D side. They do have Heiner here in Snake 1, and he's also got a player right beside him. But those guys, oh, minor penalty. That's that's going to do it right here. Heiner does, like, Heiner does get a shot on the middle, but... Yeah, you got he, a, sh a shot on Dempsey, but... Yeah, he's going to get pulled... So UCF. Sibling. Yeah, UCF looking pretty good right now. Sibling in there on that one over here, shading towards the snake side. And 
definitely got a little bit of a gift there with that penalty, but still the Knights have, uh, they've had their off the break shot styled in. They're making crisp moves. They're, they're doing what they need to do to try to get a win here. This tournament normally held at UCF's home field too, Central Florida Paintball, but we have moved to a new location over here in the city. It's really nice. I hear here comes barking. the rain. <laughs> here comes the rain. So I got this replay. So yeah, you can see Heiner there. He's in snake one. Gets that shot on uh, on dot or on Dempsey in the center. But there was just too many bodies left around him. There's nothing he could do. Even though Daughtry and Dempsey have both come off a little early, didn't matter. That point goes to UCF Knights as we get again that rain starting to fall. I guess the experts were wrong, Todd. They were. They're always wrong. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. It's nice up here in our uh, air conditioned, <laughs> air conditioned covered booth. NCPA provides us with nothing but the finest. That tray of caviar that we had for breakfast was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna have to huddle up a little bit here as the winds are kicking up. But thank you guys again so much for joining us here, College Paintball Championships. Uh, in Orlando, Florida, and we did get some pretty decent paintball weather to start the morning out with the overcast skies, no humidity, not too hot, but now get a little bit of a light, a little bit of a light rain. It's not that bad yet, so yeah, you're on the side, you're on the rain side over there, though. <laughs> yeah, as your, as, your, as your right arm, it it's kind of it's going more that way than it's coming this way, so you know, we're actually uh, not doing too bad up here. Yeah, we still so, get to watch. We still get to watch. Yeah, the I mean, game we, at least we do have a cover, you know, yeah, cover over us. Though, unfortunately, the players out there do not have a cover, so they're gonna have to play through this. And you know, the only reason paintball will stop is if, uh, is if the thunder and lightning starts coming. Ooh, that's the only time that <laughs> got one. They really paintball's kind of like football in that respect, and kind of play through the weather. So yeah, we're tough like that. We ain't scared <laughs> no rain. I ain't scared of rain. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll play in the rain. So right now here, they're getting. A nice glimpse at our little scaffolding <laughs> as our crew is going to come up to kind of weatherproof up here a little bit. Hey, yeah, Mick. I'd like to thank Mick to come up here. You know, big crew working behind the scenes to bring you guys some paintball. And uh, we see the uh, everyone that came out to watch this game kind of rubbing for cover a little bit. Let this, this isn't that bad. It's a little drizzle. Just a little drizzle. Just a little drizzle. Compared to Dallas a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, this is like a gentle shower on a bright sunny day <laughs> it's quite pleasurable i like it i'm into this what's always fun about playing in the rain definitely not the fact that your paintballs go flying all over the place but your slides look way better you don't run into the snake spot and feel on the on the break oh you get that there. extra eight foot oh yeah eight feet on the slide So, so here we go, getting ready to go on the breakout. Clemson with one body in the break, getting that penalty right at the end, getting the last body pull, start down one. Yeah, so still a minute and 45 seconds on that Clemson penalty. Actually, yeah, about a minute and 40. And so Clemson's gonna have to battle with four players here. They lost the body on the break though. UCF losing Daughtry early on the snake side. Get shot out, but quickly fill in that spot. They got two bodies over on the Dorito side as well, already pushing up into that 50 Dorito in the red zone. And yeah, Dorito too. We can see both teams have a player in the snake. A little bit better field position right now for Clemson as they're trying to eat that time off that penalty clock. Still about a minute left on that clock. And we're looking on the D side. Here's the D side battle for the Knights. Looks like trying to make a move over here, and they do. It's a mirror the move. For Clemson, so both teams. I think that's Evans there. Oh, and he gets shot and run down. I'm sure, that was from Clemson here. Nice. He goes Moore. Right there. Nice work by yeah, Moore. Moore. Yeah, Moore gets in there and cleans him out. But unfortunately for Clemson, I don't think they have any bodies left. So that's gonna do it. UCF running it in again, trying to save the time on that Clemson penalty. So they can continue to break out five on four. Yeah, still 23 seconds. 
Yeah, so still 23 seconds on that major penalty for Clemson. And looks like the point is good. So it's, it's been all UCF night so far. Let's check out this replay here. So we're looking on the snake side. Moore is about to make his move. Moore launches for Clemson. This is a nice move. He gets one, then he gets picked up. He probably could have just shot him and then dove back in, but really trying to think break that point open because you know bodies were dying around him. So it was kind of do or die at that situation for Moore. Yeah, well, it, was a, it was a clean move. He got the first guy very clean and then got torched by this, the, his, his backup, which is, you know, that's what you want to happen if you have the two behind you. Actually, you'd like to pr protect you and get that shot on him before he gets to you, but it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, maybe didn't pick him up. But when you make that move down the snake, you want to try and shoot the body and then dive in, either take his spot, take the one right next to it. But, you know, when you're making those moves, yeah, you never know what's happening behind you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can all, if you can preserve your body and stay alive, you know, he might be able to come up to that spot and you know be ready for the second one. But you know, that's the experience of high level paintball. You know, do you just know that the guy's in front of you and and just go get him off? Which sometimes is the right thing to do in certain situations. But you know, being down bodies out there, they're down bodies off the break, starting with the penalty. But you know, you always got to think about your second and third moves uh, as you're making your first move. So. Either way, it would have been a tough one for him as Purdue, I'm sorry, UCF had all the bodies. And there is UCF, that was Daughtry with Chain on your screen. Now we're looking at Clemson, getting ready to go here. So just a couple seconds before the start of this next point and there they go, Clemson on the run all the way to the snake off the break and all the way up into the center as well. UCF matches that move there at the center. Looks like Daughtry holds up this time. And I think that that is uh, Dempsey up in the up in the center. And he gets destroyed. He gets run down. But they were able to get the guy that got him. Daughtry on that chaos. He gets to the snake. And there's no one in front of him. So Daughtry now off to the races. Dives in. Nice move by Daughtry. No one picked him up. <laughs> oh, oh, Daughtry got him on the slide in. And he's still alive. Killer double knee slide right there into the snake side oh, tower. I Daughtry just punched him right in the chest. Yeah, Daughtry more on the Superman dive shot. Nice work by Daughtry, and also the player right behind him is clean as well, too. Siverling, yeah, that was Siverling behind him. So nice job by Siverling and Daughtry, the tag team over here on the snake side to keep it perfect right now for UCF. Hopefully we have that replay. This game brought to you by Empire Paintball. Oh, man. Yeah, so let's check out this replay here, and I hope this is Daughtry on the Superman dive. So there it goes Clemson. Double with knees. The double knee slide into the stand-up, and then he just gets <laughs> just <laughs> shot to the ground. It's gets pushed back by Daughtry's paintballs. That's why you don't slide belly first, you know. Stick your belly out there. Grab a couple to the stomach. What do you think about his double knee slide, though? Well, I'll tell you what. Solid form on the double knee slide by Young there. I, I got a chance to talk to Young during the break. Really nice guy. He normally plays up in the center. Um, but I think he was coming out of the box, right? Yeah. Yeah, coming out of the box. So, yeah, Young had no idea that Daughtry was off to the races on this side and got caught sleeping. So we'll see if Clemson here can get something done because right now they're just getting beat up by uh, UCF Knights. So we're going to take a really quick short commercial break here. We'll be right back. 5.45 to go in this first half. here as the wind is picking up this afternoon and you can see UCF getting ready so flawless paintball so far from University of Central Florida Knights and there is Clemson you know again this is Clemson's first adventure into class A and uh, again I got a chance to talk to them during the break they're pretty excited here about this match they're just uh, you know they're stoked to be up here in this this level of competition and see how they can do there goes young off up into that center for Clemson. No one's up there with him, but UCF shoots a body off the break, and there goes another one. 
So Clemson not looking good here. Just three bodies alive. Young all by himself up in the center. There's another body that dies. So I think Young also just caught one there on his front. He got to be careful not to get a penalty. Yep, it takes about another triple tap there on the inside part of his leg. And here come the Knights. Man, that was a quick one there for UCF. Yeah, no, that was definitely another quick one. So this is the point where Clemson, with five minutes here in the first half, they have got to get something going here. You do not want, want to let the Knights start to put point after point after point on the board here with no answer. You can see the frustration. Let's see, let's, well, let's see. I mean, let's see how they look in the pits. There's more. Oh, they look pretty calm and composed still. Yeah, still about 15 minutes left to play. You know, so plenty of time to get things together, try some different stuff. You know, and that's what's, again, nice about playing, you know, two 10-minute halves is that you have plenty of time to try different stuff. You know, try and figure out if one thing's not working, let's, let's try something different. Even if you continue to lose points, you know, being a, a less experienced team, you know, you at least get tournament experience where you get to try different stuff, you know, and see if anything's working for you. Maybe take that to some of your later games, but the more experienced teams here, as far as, you know, having been playing Class A, having been a program for longer, definitely showing the difference out here early. Well, it looks like we have Lauren Kelly down with Daughtry in the pits for the Knights. I am here with Daughtry. You had an incredible play for that four-point lead here on the Snakes that you were actually one-handed, holding the gun one-handed when you dove in. Uh, what was your plan going into that move? Was it just luck that got you those kills, or how did that work out? Oh, um, sometimes in paintball, like, you know, things happen that you don't necessarily expect. So uh, one of the good things though is I was running my, my head up and so I saw, I forgot about the penalty. Uh, I saw the player leave the penalty box and I knew he's an immediate threat to me. So I kind of had to, you know, just whip my gun up and throw it his way and it worked out, so. Clemson has been trying to get into the snake off the break. Can you break down the snake side for us and tell us how tough that is to get into the snake off the break? Getting the snake off the break is, is pretty tough. Um, I personally, the way I've been doing it is I've been sliding into the uh, this back cake here and then throwing some paint over the home. And then once the home's lane drops, go up to the tower and just work my way up as the game allows me to. So. All right, well, there is Zach Daughtry's secret to getting into the snake off the break. Back up to you guys. Don't worry, Lauren. We won't tell anybody. And there is uh, John Sr., one of the coaches, long time here, the owner of Central Florida Paintball, long time paintball patron down here in Florida. And it looks like a timeout has been called, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. To play well at a tournament, you have to make a lot of good decisions. But making the right decisions doesn't start the day of the tournament. It starts every single time you step on the practice field and practice until you can't practice anymore. And only when you feel like you've given your preparation everything you've got, you can trust yourself to make the right decisions on the field. And then you get the chance to win. And that's why we choose GI Sports. Back here, 2016 NCPA Championships. Right now, the Knights are putting it on the Clemson Tigers. And Central Florida looking real good here in their game on the webcast field. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This game brought to you by Empire Paintball and Kissimmee Sports. And we are here in Kissimmee, Florida. Just outside of Orlando. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So here we go on the breakout. And now all the way to the snake off the break. Switching things up here is looks like Daughtry gets a rest from heading out on the snake side of the field. And Clemson's still struggling to keep five bodies alive. They lose a body early here. And pushing up on that D side of the field and up in the center. 
Oh, but UCF loses a body trying to get up that center to get to a stand-up. Wind really picking up. The rain stopped with the wind really blowing towards Clemson right now. And sometimes and when that like happens, gonna... you get those wing shots, you know? Kind of yeah. help you ride the, ride the turbulence of the air, get the balls to curve. But they just picked up a major out of the back center. They're going to lose a body. So just two left alive now for Clemson. But here they come on the attack. Down that Dorito side. Each team has a player in that 40 Dorito. Well, UCF losing another body. I think we might have a one-on-one -on -one right now. Yeah, we do. We have a one-on-one. -on -one. So body dropping for both teams. But don't forget about the Clemson penalty. I mean, this would have to be a long one-on-one -on -one for Clemson to get their body back. Well, Heiner definitely wants to make this a long one-on-one -on -one so he can burn that time. but Or win it. And then, yeah, a longer one-on-one -on -one would be good. But most importantly, they need the point, man. I mean, down by five. Yeah, sure, we got a, a whole second half of play here, but the Knights are, are just looking spectacular thus far. We'll see if Heiner can save it for his team and put a point on the board, pull within four. Heiner still a bunch of paintballs on his back, so he loads his loads of body, still has three. Always kind of trying to keep count of each player's paint when they get in these situations. So both using that... Uh, center can right there to create some space. Heiner kind of hugging that snake one, going back and forth. Go. Well, this is that long one-on-one -on -one that Heiner wanted. But Come now, ideal, ideally, he's gonna want to win this gunfight. He's not, he's not in the good spot, I was gonna say. That's a tough spot. Uh, as the player for UCF, I'm not sure who that was, but he sees, he turns around. That was uh, Zudel. No, I think that was uh, Kirkuk. Uh, Kirkuk. So nice job by Kirkuk there to put the point on the board. Yet another one here for UCF. So on the on the replay here, you're looking at Clemson trying to take some ground. Slide in there, kind of deep on the snake. Kind of want to get a little bit tighter than that. And the reason you just got shot on the head is because you didn't take cover and try to do too much. So then there's Heiner, who's in a bad spot. In a one-on-one, -on -one, you don't want to be on your knees while the other guy is standing up. Just a much better angle for uh, Kirkuk in there. So just a solid work across the board. UCF really have no chinks in their armor so far here, Todd. Yeah, really just playing outstanding. And, I mean, that was the opportunity right there for Clemson to put a point on the board, but... Yeah, too much experience for UCF, bringing it down to a one-on-one, -on -one, then executing. So, and that's a tough one to lose too if you're Clemson, you know, especially because they got a penalty. They had the and bodies. Didn't, get, didn't even get the whole penalty off either. They still have to start down the body. So, so they're going to be starting four on five. Uh, it's not looking good. Pretty deep hole. <laughs> yeah, a real deep hole they've dug themselves right here, or that UCF dug for them. Yeah, stuck them right in it. Because, yeah, it's just UCF's. Clemson's, they're trying to get to the spots. I mean, they're just getting beat. They're just getting beat at, at every level. They're getting shot off the break. That's a big problem. Um, we just saw their player make it to Snake one off the break, and what's the first thing he does? Comes over the top of his bunker. Thus, he, that's a huge exposure right there. I mean, of course you're going to get shot when, you, when you're taking spots and trying to do that. You, know, you should get in there. If you're having problems uh, putting points on the board, you, and you have as much time as these guys have, just get to the spot. That's step one. And then smartly engage. Don't get to the spot and just come railing your gun over the top of your bunker and hoping the guy misses you. Yeah, you gotta live first. You know, you gotta live. Give yourself an opportunity to allow the game to die down for a second. And then try and make something happen. But if they get to the snake on the break again, but doesn't get in low enough, get shot in the pack, he's gonna come walking off. So only three bodies left alive now for Clemson, one over there on the Dorito side, but looks like he's gonna get pulled and get a minor penalty on a pack hit. He's gonna save as he tries to get out there. That's a bold move, Cotton. See how it works out for him. Ooh, there goes so good. double knee slide once again. Unsuccessful going all the way out as Daughtry just blows down the snake side. It's all the way into the backfield again as UCF. Daughtry and Evans over here on the snake side. Just chopping bodies up, all five players alive well, we, UCF. I mean, we still have a whole second half of play here. So, you know, hopefully Clemson uh, 
does something here. I, I'm trying to think like, okay, what sort of advice can we give them? They're just not getting, they're, they're getting beat mentally right now. They're not getting five bodies out alive and it's starting to frustrate them. So the guys that do make it out alive start engaging in needless gunfights, trying to make something happen because they're down a ton of points and they feel they, you know, they feel, they do feel that sense of urgency at least, but just because you feel the sense of urgency still means you have to make smart gunfighting decisions. So the point's good. So with a minute and 25 seconds left and the score is seven to zero, this is definitely, uh, you know, the most, the most we've seen one team run away with the score so far in all these games thus far. So as Clemson tries to reset and figure out what the hell they can do to try to stop the aggressive push of the Knights, we're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be right back. We are back into the 7-0 stomping that the Knights are putting on the Tigers right now with a minute and 25 seconds to go in this first half and a whole second half of play. So should Clemson somehow find the, uh, the magical play to start implementing here, we could see something happen here. But again, you know, I don't want to knock Clemson too hard. This is their first year in Class A. The UCF Knights have been up in this division for years and with a solid competitive squad. We've seen them do really well in these tournaments. And though they're still on a little bit of a rebuild year, and here goes Clemson up, double stacking that center, but still, I mean, they have not played a point yet where they've had five bodies alive. And then no one on the on the Dorito side, and now another minor penalty. So yeah. it's up to the two players for Clemson up that center. And here comes the big move. Whitney running down the snake. He shoots the one player in the middle, but doesn't realize that there was a second one there up in the Wario. And then Conti comes back to the snake side and he gets his face painted up by not exactly sure who that was. Severling? Severing. Severing. Severling. 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 Wario. I don't know. I went over and uh, checked all the names for Clemson before this game. They all like super easy names to pronounce, like Moore, Dinkle, Conti, Turner, and then go over to the Florida Knights, and I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Kirk Gooch, Kirk Severling, Kirk Hook, Lamont, the Lamontane, Dempsey's wearing somebody else's jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Lamontane. There's two Lamontanes. They're brothers. Garrett and David. That's cool. Yeah. Have a brother on the team, playing yeah. college on the same squad. Yeah, one year separates them, 24 and 23. So, so that, yeah, that right there, that was a big move by uh, Whitney. Yeah. And then so, he got picked off in the back. Florida Knights getting contributions from pretty much everyone they put on the field right now. Let's check it with Lauren. Thanks. CFU is in the pit saying they are here to make a statement and they are doing that here in this first half against the Tigers. The Tigers moving forward say that they have a nothing to lose, everything to prove mentality. They're going to try to amp it up and uh, show us some even more aggressive plays to try to get some points on this board. Back to you. Hey, leave it all out there. Nothing to lose with this. I mean, they didn't have anything to lose to start with. But... Now the Knights is looking really good. It's tough. I mean, you have a team coming in that's favored in the Knights, and they are just, uh, you know, allergating <laughs> the Clemson Tigers right now. Uh, that's our pal over there, Catfish Jr., just sitting in the lake about 100 feet from us. Just hoping to God somebody falls in. Yeah, just waiting like, uh, that producer looked kind of yummy. <laughs> He's already peeled. <laughs> Oh, man. 
So just a few seconds to go before the start of this next one, hoping that most of the weather is going to be pushing a little uh, off to the side here. It's, I don't know, this cloud look pretty ominous in the background. And you guys can see on your screen here, 25 seconds to go in this first half. And Clemson getting skunked right now by UCF Knights. Looks like Daughtry catches the bounce on the break. Running out, Evans gets picked off, trying to run up the middle. 10 seconds left, there's Evans running off the field. And there you see another major penalty on Clemson. Oh, man, that's rough. Well, not doing themselves any favors out here, that's for sure. Yeah, I think they had a lot of penalties against, uh, if I remember correctly when I spoke to them before this match, they had a lot of penalties in their Texas A&M game. So. And there is the coach of the UCF Knights helping out. That's a little bit of sportsmanship there. Patting him on the shoulder. John Senior's a great guy. Awesome guy. I've known that guy for a long time. And just a real big supporter of the game. Well, let's check in with Lauren. Looks like she has uh, Stephen Kirkcook from uh, UCF. Thanks, I am here with Stephen Kirkcook. Now, you played that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it was going on for a while. Obviously, you guys have a lot of experience, and I'm sure you drill one-on-ones often. In that situation, what was running through your mind that you needed to execute in order to make sure you got the kill? Number one, he was in a snake. It's the worst bunker to be on one-on-one -on -one with. Um, I have my brother on the sideline, and I've been playing with him for years, so he just coached me through it. I like I already knew I had enough paint, and it was just waiting it out, plus we're up points, so I just had to buy time. Where are the best bunkers to be when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation? Um, Pretty much the middle of the field, wherever there's more bunkers, the better. That I don't know if you noticed, but he was stuck in that one position where I was able to move around, and I just pinched him out eventually. But I mean, the more more opportunity that he can move, the better. And he was playing from his knees, so it's just it's hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, CFU has a very significant lead. They will most likely take this win, but we'll see. Stay tuned. Well, we do have a full second half of competition. But things do not look good for Clemson right now. We'll see, though. So, with a little bit of a break here before the start of the second half, stick with us. We'll be right back. The R2 has taken Dye's proven rotor platform, known for years for delivering high-level professional performance, to a new height and paintball loader technology. The R2 gives you the freedom to switch between low and high capacity, allowing for a choice between a 200 and 260 ball capacity at any time, without the need for tools or additional shells. The R2 Reload Alert gives you a progressive alert as you deplete your paint reserve. The Reload Alert system signals you when the R2 is low on paint, and it's time to reload. The patented rotor carousel provides consistently high feed rates, which far exceeds pro requirements, and a re-engineered feed system yields improved feeding reliability. With the active power conservation, the R2 monitors power needs and continuously optimizes the power supply. This active conservation of power makes the loader extremely efficient and provides excellent battery life. The R2 alerts you with a red indicator light when the batteries have reached levels low enough to possibly impede performance. The R2 can be effortlessly broken down for true toolless cleaning and maintenance. The collapsing floor tray gives you the maximum ball capacity while ensuring reliable feeding down to the last ball. And with the highest feed rate on the market, rotor is certain to keep up with any marker. The R2 benefits from the new rapid release safeguard system. This system allows you to change between a lid and a quick feed at a moment's notice, depending on your playing needs and weather conditions. The Die R2 loading system, proven technology with new added and upgraded functional features, bringing smart, elegant loader engineering to the game, designed with the player in mind.
Welcome back here, second half of this competition between Clemson and the UCF Knights. The Tigers, unfortunately, have not scored a point if you guys just joined us, and they got a slew of penalties. We've seen five penalties so far just in the first half, kind of pretty much trying to hit the record here. We have seen a penalty-filled day so far in the first day of competition at the 2016 NCPA Championships. These teams are going to switch sides, and there is Clemson getting ready to roll. Nothing to lose at this point, so look for them to potentially play aggressive. The issue at stake, though, is that if one team does play aggressive and the other team digs in and shoots them up, uh, you're going to see a lot of points scored because those games are going to go quickly. So here we go. Ten minutes on the clock in the second half, and there we talked, just talked about it, going up to that center with Young, and he is trying to shoot towards Daughtry and the Snake. Looks like and then Young is going to come around and get some. Nice work by Young. He's still alive. No one has picked up Young. Daughtry comes and shoots him out of that center, but nice work by Young. <laughs> oh, Young with the move. Daughtry just sat there, didn't even care. Let him come over and then torch them. There we see Daughtry on your screen right there. Now just post it up. Sitting in the snake. Oh, 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 but Daughtry got his eye dotted there. Trying to head peek over the top. Thought he was safe. Caught one cross field. So Daughtry's going to be a little disappointed when he goes back and watches the table now. Oh, man. That Dorito play over there in the 40 just blew Daughtry super hard. Right in the goggles. Didn't even see it as Evans. Starts making a move up on that mini Wario on the snake side, and he gets shot right in the face. Thanking for a penalty. Run -through. That's another one. Doesn't get it though. So nice work now by Clemson with some aggression. Blow it open that D side. No one on that side right now for the Knights. So the Tigers might be able to get one here. Yeah, and it looks like uh, UCF loses another guy, and as it's uh, Whitney, and he gets shot out of the snake one spot. So I think Clemson might put a, port a point on the board here, Todd. And they were on, they were down a body too. They started this this particular point with four bodies again. Yeah, still not exactly sure where all the bodies are. As uh, the player comes out of the back, goes and grabs the flag. Yeah, Edens. <laughs> there we go, boys. So, good job right there by Clemson on the big move down the Dorito side. Get a couple bodies, as well as the move through the middle to come get that threat right away. Check out this replay. Here we have Clemson on the stunt in the middle. Comes Young. right around, gets one. Still alive. Looks for another body, nobody. Searching for kills. Hey, nice work by Young there. And uh, again, I, that's one of the guys, look at Daughtry, just looking over the top and turns <laughs> around like, did anybody see me just get shot through that lane? How did that happen? Where do we go? Yeah, and that's when, you, anytime you see a guy who's pretty good, gets shot and doesn't where it came from, he immediately does that slow walk off, trying to find that angle. And, yeah. That's, I, that's the Dave Baines. Or the Oliver Lane. Absolutely. The old where did I get shot from. I told that dude to give me my shirt back last week. I'm still holding on to it. Who? That guy. Heiner? <laughs> The uh, Clemson coach down here, looking like he's on a Hawaiian vacation. <laughs> yeah, I just heard do this one for pride, nothing to lose from Clemson, and that's the truth. You know, they just put a point on the board. Yeah, it looks like the coach for uh, Clemson struggling through some sort of foot injury, just purple taping it up in a Hawaiian shirt. He got a shirt injury right hey, now. Hey, he's in Florida, man. Trying to get some sun. It's not really that sunny right now, but. Let the chest hairs poke out a little bit. Enjoy the rain. <laughs> so there's the split screen. Clemson on your right and the Knights on your left. 8.29 to go. So a ton of time in the second half. And that body you can see there for Clemson still chilling in that penalty box. They are starting with four again. And Young goes up to the center again. And gets a shot. on oh, That's not Daughtry this time. That's, uh, I think that's... That was um, Dempsey. Young is just sidearm gadding, bumbling, bumbling, stumbling up the middle of the field, getting kills right now, just doing work. Yeah, again, I talked to Young. We were talking about that center, and he, he looked raring and ready to get some. He wanted to get up there and get after it. I told him how much of a battleground that had become, and he was just got all big-eyed, saucer-eyed, and was like, I can't wait for it. Yeah, he's all about it. He's in there right now. Dice is up another one, trying to make a move up on him. You see, that player can't even believe it. He doesn't even want to come out. Yeah, so that's a two-pack right there for Young. He did what he was supposed to do up in there, even the, the body count here. 
So it's two on two, no, three on two in favor of Clemson. More on your screen. There in snake one for Clemson. If I'm the Knights right now, I'm just gonna slow play at this point as much as I possibly can. Actually, there's, it's, uh, it's like it's three on three. Clemson up over the top of the snake, looking to make a move. He wants to come down the highway. He is. Oh, He's nice. gonna do it. Goes out Moore. super wide. Moore. And Moore stays alive. Comes, jumps over the top, try to trade out, and that is going to be another kill for Moore. And Moore, nice move right there by Moore. Came out super wide. Didn't get shot and realized that he could have come back in. Went right back into the snake. Looks like we got a two-on-one now in favor of Clemson. They got one body in the back center. Can the one player in the little mini Mario over there. And he gets shot. Up. And, oh well, yeah, looks like the two Dorito side players trade. So Clemson going on a little run here. Two points coming back against UCF to start the second half. So seeing some signs of life out of Clemson. Heiner there with the hang. Getting checked out by the referee. 6.35 to play. It's just a little, you know, too little too late here. We're talking about a seven-point differential. But I do like what I, I like the aggression we're seeing out of Clemson. Look at this move. As Moore comes down, gets one, and then stays alive in there, gets right into his spot. There's no one in front of him, and then he's about to, they're trying to attempt a run through right there. But he gets a shot on him too, so trades out two for one. So both Young and Moore, this is uh, Whitney getting just, just getting tapped out. No, thank so you. let's check in with Lauren down in the Clemson pits. Thanks. After a rough first half, Clemson has really come back here getting two of the first points here in this second half. The main thing I've noticed that is different is their communication has significantly changed. Just in that last point, Moore was in the snake and he was listening to his teammates on the sidelines as well as sideline coach telling him exactly when to attack that CFU player on the snake side getting that kill. Uh, they've been getting a ton of players from other teams have come into their pit to help them in here because they actually had no help, which was costing them the communication in that first half so we'll see if they can keep this up back to you thanks Lauren yeah the communication is huge and the better your communication is the higher your chances are to prevail in any given match this is paintball man you have to be able to get as much information as you possibly can to figure out what you're gonna do what moves you're going to make we just saw one of the members of the I'd say favorite Texan A&M Aggies who have really stacked their roster this season and they have a couple semi-pro and one former pro play pro paintball player on their team as uh, Texas paintball has really come up with I mean, the Texas paintball has always been really solid but man the past five years I mean Texas paintball has really started to make strides you know I mean obviously Houston Heat even though they're not really Texan uh, but San Antonio X Factor won a world championship not too long ago AC Dallas uh, they've been doing well in their first you know first couple spins in the pro ranks Looks like UCF going hard to the snake. Getting in there but losing the middle guy. Double double W play for Clemson. But both bodies get chopped up. And that snake player is going to shoot up. Where's Paso is going to shoot up that spot uh, yeah. over there on the Dorito side. Yeah, it's actually Dempsey. Dempsey wearing Paso's his jersey. Dempsey didn't get his jersey in time. Should have a train on. But now Dempsey going to try to run him down. There's more right there. Oh, we're going to exchange. Does he get him? Looks like he does. Daughtry getting shot coming off the field. We have more over here again in the snake. Might be a one on one. Evans is over there. No, it's two. In the two Dorito. I think it's a two on one. Moore just got to go one more step further. Well, both both teams looking like with the penalty right now. So, do you see anyone in the box for Clemson? No, it was on the Knights. So, yeah, major penalty on the Knights. So this is gonna help things out for Clemson, see if they can work with some of this time. Moore, we gotta go lower than that, Moore. So Moore gets lucky trying to get across that lane, working on his gun right now. And that is gonna leave it up to the other player for Clemson. And he comes around and gets that shot on him. Nice work and trades out with Heiner. Heiner's been all over the place. <laughs> oh man, the madness right now. Clemson just throwing bodies everywhere, just going to get it. I like just it though. The dice. Hey, wait, like they said, they, when they started, I could hear it through my headphones. Hey, we're playing this one for pride. We have nothing to lose. One of their guys was screaming that at the players walking out onto the field, and that's what it's been looking like here. Now, all of a sudden, they get three points on the board. I mean, it's still talking about a six-point spread with five minutes to go, and the Knights did give them a gift getting that major penalty, which they still have a minute and 13 seconds left, so they're going to be down a body for this next point. 
but I like the fight in Clemson. This is what you want to see. This is what you want to see. We're talking about the future of these teams and these guys come in. And, and we've seen every single team come up into Class A. Nobody does well right away. Nobody does. Yeah, that's they, tough. you got to come out, take your beatings, and learn from them. And uh, and then you can see what you can do from there. Get, hopefully get a couple, maybe a little bit more deeper rosters. Uh, you know, obviously improve with the players you have. But I like the fight that I'm seeing at Clemson right now in their first year here in Class A. Well, that's the thing, you know, like I was saying, you have so much time, you know, with two 10-minute halves, that you can just try different stuff. If you go out here and your first game plan's not working, your second game plan's not working, you know, you take a time out and you go like, what haven't we done yet? You let's know, we're that. new, let's, let's, we'll do the triple Mario play. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I also, I just like what I'm seeing individually yeah. out of the guys. You can tell the intensity of them. The sharper on their gunfights, not making as bad of decisions as they were making in that first half. And most importantly, you see that, you know, that uh, that mental toughness start to set in where they're like, we don't want to go out like this. Let's win some points here. Yeah. We don't really have anything to lose. And we are definitely starting to see, again, just a little more fire out of Clemson. And it, you know what? It seems like uh, UCF may have, you know, pumped the brakes a little bit. Here comes the double Mario play from Clemson coming straight through on the break. They exchange and get one. UCF goes into the snake. And then Moore <laughs> gets chopped up standing there, but, you know, still sending bodies. And I agree with you, Maddie, you know, it's where you see what you're made of. You know, not when everything's going great, but when things start to get tough. That's, yeah, that's the test. It's really easy to be an awesome person, an awesome player when everything's going right. It's what happens when things are going bad. That's what defines you. I do like what I'm seeing out of Clemson here. And now they send Young right back up into the center. If you can't stop it, keep doing it. They're just running out of time, though. Four minutes and 37 seconds to go. 46 seconds left on that UCF penalty. And there's Young on your screen with the Clemson Tigers. Sitting in there holding his lane. They're going to have to come get him because he's not coming easy. Ooh, you always got to be careful not to get those spinning penalties, though. Yeah, I thought for a close. second he might have got it when he got shot to the ground. Almost, I mean, uh, that's one of those ones where the referee's always going to take a second look at that. <laughs> and there comes the move into the snake. Gonna lay down, collect himself. Lots of Clemson bodies walking off right now. I think that might actually be all the rest of them. So UCF going to get their body out of the box as well. And they are in no hurry to hang that flag. So Clemson is going to concede another point. That's going to put double-digit points on the board for the Knights as they crack that 10 mark. 10 to 3 is the score as we're getting a look real quick here into the pits for Clemson. Looking forward to this next game, Texas A&M Aggies, which everyone's been telling me is you know, one of the favorites here with the Rasa they're bringing to this. And Florida Atlantic Owls, which we've seen win this tournament before. Yeah, last year's champions got some fresh new digs too. Getting ready to come out. And there's John Smith Sr., coach for UCF Knights. So, yeah, two more games coming at you after the conclusion of this match. Still a little bit of time left in this one, 3.44 to go. Uh, and though Clemson did lose that point, I just, again, like the fight I'm seeing out of them here. They're losing, they're losing bad, but they refuse to give up the fight. Yeah, three straight points out of the half, you know, showing a little bit of mental toughness. Uh, and, you know, just fighting back. UCF, former champion, playing experience. Uh, top tier NCPA player in Daughtry, you know, just blowing down the snake side point after point, kind of pumped the brakes a little bit, and you know, that's definitely not what you want to do. But you know, a big enough lead uh, to where they can try and make the points a little bit slower. So. Look at this replay here. There's Young trying to shoot towards the snake side, gets dumped, <laughs> he gets dumped on there. But I do again. Young has been going up there point after point after point and giving a lot more than he's been taking. Uh, recently at least yeah and there is young on your screen and the Clemson Tigers getting ready to launch again there goes flash Heiner young you think Young's gonna go guaranteed guaranteed there he goes all the way up to the middle of the break 
Looks like he's gonna run into somebody. Who's the first to go? Let's see who goes and gets some first. Oh yeah! Oh, gets the dome peeled off. <laughs> Solo traded out with them. Oh, that's gonna be fun for a while. Both teams just crashed into each other. Let's. Clemson loses another body out of the back center. They got three bodies left alive. One on the Dorito side. They're gonna move now into the snake. But Daughtry making his move into the 50 snake. He's gonna get the kill across the field on the Dorito side. Daughtry in real good position. He's gonna launch. Post up, he waits. Oh, that was pretty. Nice work by Daughtry. He heard the coach screaming. For Clemson, the Daughtry was coming, so he slowed down and just walked up and put one ball on him. The guy did trade out with him, but, I mean, that's best-case scenario right there. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. I just like seeing Daughtry's, Daughtry's wheels turning, though. Yeah, you know, sure. He didn't just fully commit. Yeah, he stopped pumping the brakes and just waited for the guy. Because you know when the coach starts yelling at you, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, everybody flips out. They flip out post-up. Flip, turn, spin, come up more on the top. So the Daughtry just stopped and waited. And then walked towards him and shot him with one ball as he came out. Did, you, did cool. the Knights get a fresh two minute? I think they got a fresh minor or a fresh major on that one. Yeah, I didn't see where it came from or who got it, but the time on the board. So now just two twenty six to go, and waiting in the wings here, the Texas A and M Aggie is going to be taking on the FAU or uh, yeah, Florida Atlantic Owls. And I've always liked watching the Owls play, and the Aggies haven't had a highly competitive Class A squad in a while. So, I mean, they've always been in there, but they've been up and down. But um, but apparently, from what I've been hearing, is they've been just mashing on teams. They beat Clemson. I mean, obviously, this is a pretty big beating, too, but they beat Clemson 11-1. Oof. I mean, UCF ran off nine straight points against, uh, <laughs> against Clemson here, but... Well, it looks like Lauren is down in the UCF pits again. Lauren, what do you got for us? Hey guys, I'm standing here with Kyle Dempsey. Now you guys have a very significant lead. You're going to take this win. But we have seen uh, the Tigers being a little bit more productive, sending Nick Young down to that W bunker right off the break. In your opinion, we saw you go to that W off the break as well. Do you think it's smarter to go off the break straight to the W or hold off a bit, let them get to the W first and then sneak up? I think my best bet is to get up there as fast as I can, landing snake side and getting in there and getting them out as fast as possible. You said laning snake side. Is that the more prominent side of the field to key up on if you can get to the W? Uh, depending on the situation, but yes. All right. Well, we'll see if the Tigers can get a point on the board here. They probably won't get this win, but back to you guys. So we're checking out this replay. So there, is that Dempsey? No, that's not Dempsey. But still a nice run through. Yeah, the Sievering. So nice work by Sievering. And then look at this with Daughtry. They yelled that he was coming, so he just slowly but surely. Did he get shot in the back of his leg? <laughs> <laughs> his own guy I couldn't really tell from that phys that position well the other body the other body was actually in the can didn't even pick up Daughtry as he can and then Daughtry just stood there and blew up uh, still it looked nice more. Yeah. Daughtry looking pretty good here and as well as the rest of the boys from the Knights yeah more Drake Moore Drake Moore's been playing pretty well for them too yeah he has you know number 23 for Clemson uh, well, there's two 23s. You got Moore and Heiner. One of them. Heiner's been doing really well, too. Yeah. So, just two minutes and 26 seconds remain in this match. Knights are going to take it. But we'll be right back with more of the action from this game. Stick with us.
to this match between Clemson and the Knights. So Clemson here, it's just been really rough for them in this match. They got a bunch of penalties. The Knights are also looking really good. I do like when I'm, the Knights look like they're they're going to be competing for a potential uh, berth in the semifinals here. We will see though. Oh, another combat roll for Clemson into the stake, and that is probably going to be a penalty. He's lucky he got a minor. Minor penalty there on Clemson, tucking and rolling, hitting into snake one. Uh, so if I'm the Knights, I just want to slow things down here. Just get this solid win. Yeah. No need to run, no reason to run the score up. Yeah, we already beat these guys pretty bad. If you're Clemson, keep charging. Got another major though on the Knights. Evans gave a major. Well, so a pair of penalties here for these teams. Clemson with the minor, Knights with the major. And that whittles the body count down here. So it looks like a couple bodies, two bodies left alive for Clemson. In the back, Bunker in the center, and now making moves. Oh, there's three of them, actually. So now there's two bodies on that D side of the field. And here comes the move up the middle from UCF. Trying to get those two Clemson players. Looks like he might have got one. That's Garrett Lamonte. No, oh, no, he's rolling with it. He's still in. No, he knows he's there. Yeah, Lamonte, the younger, runs through and gets one. Did he get one? Yeah. We'll give him one. Uh, and then not Young, coming through the middle, still alive. Yeah, and Dinkle also alive, too. I think it was Dinkle was in that box. Young's going to be happy he got through a point without getting bunkered this time. Young? Young bunkered somebody, yeah. Yeah, Young's been going to war up in that center. <laughs> Finished the game alive. It was like when uh, we were in Vegas and we're watching that uh, D1 final. And it was a distortion out of Canada. You know, they had their player. Um, Are you sure there was an image? Was yes, image. 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 And that one guy got bunkered like six times in a row. Yeah. Michael Finlay was up there and it was just like, went in, got bunkered, get like worn a bunker out. guy. Got bunkered a couple more times. No, he got, I comes he, back, bunkered, come back. I feel like he times. got worn out a bunch in a row. But then the story that, uh, that what I thought was awesome for him was that he, he didn't, after that, he was like, okay, I'm tired of getting bunker. Then he started running through and dishing it out. Mitch Finlay, that's yeah. who it was. Yeah. And Image ended up winning that game. <laughs> exactly, because of the way he was playing. Yeah, it was good. It was a good story. Oh, yeah. Couldn't head check away from that one. And here is Lamonte and the Younger going through there. It looked like he got one, but he was looking at three bodies. Begging for a penalty there from the referee. Didn't get it. There is the hang for Clemson as they're going to put four on the board. UCF going to be starting with four bodies, 102 on penalty, and under a minute to go. So we'll see what sort of game plan Clemson is going to bring. Hey, under a minute, they're going to lose this match. They've already been fighting hard. I'm thinking aggressive play up the center. Going to go out on a limb talk, say aggressive move up the center. I would do it. Double Wu Tang. Double? Double Wu Tang. Why I would triple. Oh. I would triple. Triple right. it up. Yeah. We've already seen a quadruple move up there earlier on today. I think you were out that game. Oh, man. Me and Catfish were calling that game. I can't believe I missed that. So, no, they're just going to single it up. Young going up there to his bunker again. And it looks like Body is going to come off early. I think that's Doctor taking the early walk. There's Heiner in there. He's going to be taking his barrel off. I don't think he's done enough time to actually squeegee that thing out. <laughs> you might as well run. Did he take a core sample? He for sure took a core, core sample. sample. Yeah. He barrel rolled last time. The barrel roll didn't work, so we went with the I core don't know technique. I that was Heiner barrel rolling in there last time. There comes Dinkle, and he gets stitched trying to get that flag. Oh, Dinkle gets dunked on. And here comes Goto. Goto getting a spin. Oh, Goto gets shot <laughs> by Heiner. Heiner, oh, Heiner doing surgery on his barrel, gets the core sample out, puts his barrel on just in time <laughs> as Goto just happens to saunter past his bunker. Goto had no idea that, that Heiner was in there. If we could replay on that, that would be great. And then Heiner picked up the flag and took off running towards the Dorito side like, I got a flag, what am I supposed to do with this thing? 
Oh, yeah. Well, look, Goto is like, I don't know. <laughs> he's trying to mime his way through telling that story out there. He's like, wait, what? I went, who? And then where? And then I came out to <laughs> put your goggles on, dude. What are you doing? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, put your goggles on, man. Oh, no, it looks like they cleared the field because I see refs without their goggles on now. <laughs> so we get a replay of that. I want to see it because Heiner is in there. He dives in, dives in, takes a core sample. And then he squeezes his gun, puts his barrel on just in time to catch Goto as he's running through. And you can see <laughs> yeah. stretching up. Look at Heiner's like, finally getting the game. I'm coming. Oh, there's a guy right here. Oh, yeah. my God. The pit goes crazy and starts yelling at him right as he screws his barrel on. Yeah, Goto thought he was going to get his moment of glory there at the end of that match. But regardless, victory and a huge one. Uh, for Central Florida Knights as they take down the Clemson Tigers. But hey, yeah, it's the Tigers first go here in Class A and you know, they were playing for pride out there. There's Daughtry, Kyle, and there's, yeah, Kyle, we got a Kyle Dempsey, Zach Daughtry, and there's Heiner and the rest of the boys. As, uh, yeah, you know, a little good show of sportsmanship right there. Let's go to. So let, let's check in with Lauren with the victors. I am here with TJ Saverling. Congratulations on that win. You guys won with such a huge point spread there. Now, you guys have been playing together and been successful together for a very long time. You're a junior on the team, so you've been building these wins with them. What is your advice for the teams who are bumping up to play X-Ball here at Nationals for the first time? Um, I would say play smart and play tight. A lot of people like to hang out of their bunker and that's how they get shot. So if you play tight, you can avoid that. All right, well, you guys definitely executed that. Congratulations on that win. I'll let you go celebrate. Back up to you guys. Well, thank you, Lauren. Yeah, congratulations to the Knights. They take a huge victory here. And we're gonna be right back. Two more games coming at you. 2016 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. And next game, Texas A&M Aggies, one of the favorites here. Going to be taking on a team that has won this event before Florida Atlantic Owls. We'll be right back. <laughs> 